The police investigation into the SNP and its missing £600,000 took another dramatic turn today. In the early hours of the morning, the crisis-ridden party's treasurer, Colin Beattie, was arrested as part of Operation Branch Form. Police Scotland has said in the past hour that Beattie has been released without charge but pending further investigation. But this latest political bombshell, which should be leading every news bulletin in the country today after months of the MSM choosing to ignore the growing SNP crisis, it comes just two weeks after the arrest of the party's ex-chief executive Peter Murrell, the husband of former leader Nicola Sturgeon. Cops, as you'll probably remember, spent two days at the fallen power couple's home, even erecting a tent, showing the likely scale of the investigation and later seizing a motorhome from Sturgeon's mother-in-law's house. Given draconian uh, Scottish contempt of court laws, there's much that cannot be said at this point. And I must stress, allegations of illegality have been denied by all parties involved. The investigation is clearly ongoing and no charges have been brought against anyone while Sturgeon has insisted that she's happy to assist the police in their investigations. But dramatic circumstances have finally woken the dormant Scottish media up to a bonfire of SNP scandals that have been hiding in plain sight for a number of years. Immediate among them, that the large political organisation that is the SNP has jaw-droppingly been without any auditors since last year. Not to mention this leaked video of Sturgeon, which was released by the Sunday Mail at the weekend, great work by them, showing the iron grip she had over the party and how she could be quite threatening about her senior officials, even asking simple questions. Be very careful, uh, all of us, about suggestions that there are problems with the party's finances because we depend on donors to donate. If there are leaks, as with everything else, it, that gets more difficult to do. So everybody has to be very clear a, a, about that. Now, last night, her former protégé turned arch nemesis, the ex-SNP leader Alex Salmond, revealed he had warned Sturgeon about her centralisation of power. Look at this. I said to Nicola and Peter at the time that uh, it couldn't work, that, you know, having the party leader and the chief executive married to each other. It wouldn't work in any business organisation. And, uh, you know, it's all right when times are good, but at some point, you know, there was, there was going to come to grief. And, of course, it probably took longer than I expected, but it's certainly coming to grief in a spectacular so, way. So you're saying you personally warned the yes, former sir. first minister yeah. about you can't be married to the to the yes. chair of this organisation. Uh, absolutely, yeah. and, and I have to say neither Nicola or Peter took the advice very well. <laughs> In fact, they took it rather badly. It was maybe the earliest reason for the breakdown of our relationship. Now look, all of this makes the farce of an SNP leadership election more ridiculous given a Sturgeon fanatic, the incompetent continuity candidate Humza Useless, has now been put in charge of a failing nation destroyed over many years by Sturgeon's separatism pipe dream. Useless was always a Sturgeon lapdog. Look at this. Uh, it's a clip uh, showing the ex-first minister just shushing her then health minister away as if he's a little boy. But Useless looks broken and humiliated now especially given he proudly declared himself the Sturgeon Unity candidate to win the election. Today, he was forced to deny his party was a criminal enterprise and came out with this classic line. Surprised that he's been arrested? Uh, well, yes, of course I'm surprised when one of my colleagues uh, has been uh, arrested, uh, but uh, you know, it's a very serious matter indeed. Yes, it is. He's facing increasingly uncomfortable questioning long overdue from the Scottish media about whether Sturgeon should be suspended pending the outcome of the investigation, uh, like this from Colin Mackay of STV News. party has misled people about the state of its membership. You've lost your auditors. There's a police inquiry into your finances. Would you have expected to know all of that as party leader? Well, again, I think we could have done more around transparency. There's no getting away from that. The membership number is a great example. We should have been far more upfront and transparent around the membership number. That was a debacle, an own goal. But as leader, you'd expect to know about all of that? Uh, you would expect to know, I would have imagined, uh, yes, about most of it. So Nicola Sturgeon should have known about all of that then? Well, again, that's for Nicola to answer what she knew and did not know whether it's about... But you would have numbers. expected to know that as party leader now. You would have expected her to know that before. Again, I, I know what my expectations are. My expectations as party leaders are to know about 
issues around membership numbers, around the party's finances. I can't speak for what Nicola knew. That at Holyrood today, Eustace was laughed at as he tried to underplay the position he now finds himself. The First Minister is, of course, not without its challenges, it's fair to say, but not to withstanding that. Perhaps the sorry state of the SNP was summed up best by the Scottish Tories deputy leader, Megan Gallagher. The SNP is in total meltdown. Hamza Yusuf is so indebted to his former mentors that he will not do the right thing and suspend them while the investigation is ongoing. It is past time that Hamza Yusuf tackled this scandal head on and proved to the Scottish public that he is his own man, instead of defending and deflecting from his predecessor's tarnished legacy. So all of this has got me thinking today. Has there ever been a fall from grace in British politics more brutal than what scheming Sturgeon is facing? I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, Queen Nick deserves to be shunned by Scots. She treated the First Minister job like a personal fiefdom, acting like a dodgy dictator, fueling nationalist hatred and turning Scots against the English, all while driving her country into the ground. But as I always knew and used to tell you regularly, her act was a mirage based on personal ambition. In the end, the fall of Sturgeon may well have saved the United Kingdom.